Hello friends, this is Dr. Jason from Providence Neuro. Do you know what emotions have in common with viruses? You may be surprised to learn this, but emotions are super contagious and catching an emotion is easier than catching a cold. It is as though an invisible bridge connects our brains. Culturally, we may cherish the idea of an independent self, but biologically, our brains are more connected than you can imagine. Today we'll find out how exactly emotions spread from brain to brain and what are the positive and negative aspects of this phenomenon. Mirror neurons were first described by scientists experimenting on macaque monkeys in the 1990s. Initially thought to be involved only in motor mimicry, later the mirror neurons were found to be involved in mirroring of emotions also. Have you noticed that in kindergarten, when one child starts crying, most of them start crying? That is emotional mirroring in action. Positive and negative emotions not only affect our mental health, but they also affect our physical health. Because the emotional part of the brain is connected to our autonomic nervous system. Emotional stress causes the levels of stress hormones to rise. And when this happens repeatedly, it can lead to chronic diseases. We already spoke about emotional mirroring in the video on empathy. Now let's talk about the methods by which emotions get transferred from brain to brain. Number 1. Facial Expressions Smiling is an uniquely human expression which is universally used to transfer positive expressions from one person to another. When someone smiles at you, you are more likely to positively respond to that person and the other way around. That is why it is said that a smile is the shortest distance between two brains. On the other hand, negative facial expressions like frowning and scowling can instantly produce stress in the other person. Have you felt irritated when a teenager speaks to you while chewing gum? That's because the act of chewing masks facial expressions and hinders communication. Number 2. Hand movements Open hands are a sign of friendliness and emotional availability. Keeping your hands hidden can make others uneasy. Yes, it was true from the time of cavemen, even before language fully evolved. And it is true even today. And many of the signs and symbols we make with our hands have turned into emojis in today's digital world. Number 3. Spontaneous Emotional Transfer Whenever we see a commotion, we tend to join in and share the emotion of the crowd, right? You know very well what happens when people catch a pickpocket or a chain snatcher. Collective anger quickly builds up against the person and nobody can save him after that. The same holds true for positive emotions like humor, solidarity and uniting for a common cause. This kind of collective emotional mirroring was probably very useful in the times of evolution, enabling people to cooperate with each other and over time leading to species dominance. Let's be happy that animals don't have this faculty. Just imagine what will happen if suddenly all the street dogs develop collective rage against you and decide to gang up on you. Number 4. Storytelling This is the final and most powerful way of transferring emotions and it can transcend geography and even time. With the advent of mass media, an injustice done in one corner of the world can spark outrage in another corner. A story or philosophy written thousands of years ago can influence our emotions today. Stories are responsible for most of what we believe and feel today. Almost all collective emotional behavior, from team spirit to national independence struggles and religious movements, all are based on stories. So it's clear that we are constantly bombarded with emotions at both the interpersonal and societal levels. An unconscious emotional exchange goes on non-stop at the so-called low road which connects the emotional centers of our brains. Some people are more susceptible to this emotional transfer, but nobody is immune. As we have seen, positive emotional transfers like smiles and laughs can motivate us, while negative emotional transfers like frowns and scowls can stress you out. An occasional stress can be okay. It can even make you stronger. But if you are stressed over and over again, without much of an opportunity to recover, it can affect your physical and mental health. Chronic emotional stress can eat away your brain and make you physically sick. This includes physically threatening behavior, verbal aggression like insulting words, neglect and social rejection. Even purposely not talking to a loved one the intention of stressing them out is a form of emotional abuse. 
the thing about chronic stress is that you don't know when you're going to break if people insult you the words may not break you the first time second time or even the 20th time but if you are continuously exposed to emotional abuse for years and months together that's when you call it a toxic environment a toxic environment will eventually break you not because there is something wrong with you but because you are human so you see that on one side humans are inherently designed to mimic and feel each other's emotions thus facilitating empathy and social connection on the other hand we need to protect ourselves from irrationally negative and abusive people n95 masks can protect you against covid but what will protect you against the toxic emotions of other people let us look at some practical steps number 1 we need to become aware of our own emotions through mindfulness this can be developed through practice with a focus on building self awareness and social awareness number 2 We also need to be mindful of the emotions we are transferring to others. Be mindful of your feelings, your facial expressions, hand movements and words. Make sure you spread positivity that fosters meaningful connections and trust. Number 3, be especially kind to workers who are facing the public every day because they have to deal with the emotions of tens and hundreds of people every day. Be kind to the waiter in the restaurant Be kind to the man in the ticket counter and also don't forget health professionals. Number 4 when someone superior to you dumps their toxic emotions on you you make sure that you don't spread the negativity to people who work under you. Make sure you protect the people who look up to you for inspiration. Number 5 spend more time with people with a positive outlook on life. and try to spend less time with people who are constantly negative and discourage you with their negativity avoid people who constantly complain put you down and make you feel guilty so to conclude we can't stop this invisible exchange of emotions but we can control what we contribute to it by spreading kindness and protecting ourselves from negativity we not only safeguard ourselves but we help shape the emotional climate of everyone around us because every smile every kind word and every compassionate gesture has the power to ripple through society and create a healthier and more connected world please mention your thoughts in the comments give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends thanks for watching and meet you in the next video